Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. In today's video, this is the updated Season 7 version of the best weapon setups for every single weapon in Battlefield 2042. So this is going to be a long one. If you enjoy the content, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, turn notifications on, and I stream every single day at twitch.tv slash enders. Follow my channel, first link in the description. I'm going to start with the secondary weapon category first and then go through all of the SMGs, assault rifles, LMGs, marksman rifles, snipers, and of course, tactical weapons. I will leave timestamps in the video if you want to jump through and figure out uh, a specific setup for one of your favorite weapons. First and foremost, in general, you're going to want to fill out your ammo types in the plus menu for every single one of these weapons if available. It offers you more ammo and it's free. There's no downside. Sites are personal preference, so I'm not going to be really focusing on weapon sites too much, although there are some standouts on a few weapons that you might care about. With that being said, the best setup for the Glock is either Arcom Tactical Muzzle Break or Factory Barrel. If you find you have some trouble with the Glock's horizontal recoil, use the Arcom Tactical Muzzle Break. I prefer it. Uh, use Laser Sight and, of course, fill out your ammo types. Close Quarter Drum Magazine is going to be your best friend on the Glock, though. Moving down the line, the MP28, Factory Barrel, or uh, Champion Muzzle Break, actually, because this is a single-shot weapon. I do find that reducing the vertical recoil is actually very effective. Um, actually, I don't know why that wasn't equipped. Laser Sight, and then, of course, Standard Issue Drum Magazine, and fill out your ammo types. Uh, moving straight down the line again, Magnum, not much to talk about here. Use High Power, don't use Armor Piercing. I wish it wouldn't auto-scroll. Like, do you notice when I, like, whatever. Just annoying. Uh, PF-51, tactical compensator, laser sight, standard issue. This gun had a 30% hip fire buff in Season 7. So if you have not used this, it's very good now. Albeit not the best TTK, the Glock and the Deagle are still the kings of the secondary weapon category. NVK, interesting weapon, worse than the Glock in my opinion. Going to want to use factory barrel, laser sight, then we get standard issue extended, use that, and then of course just use standard issue. Moving right down the line, Super 500, the only secondary shotgun in the game. Not much to talk about here. Use Buckshot. Do not use Flechette or Slugs. If you want to troll, you can use Slugs. That can be pretty fun. L9CZ. Apparently, it's worse than the Single Fire Glock, but it is still a fun sidearm, and I actually did Tier 1 it. Use Factory Barrel, Laser Sight, and, uh, of course, Close Combat Extended. Moving on to the Desert Eagle. The Glock and the Desert Eagle are the best secondary weapons in the game. Desert Eagle, if you're a little uh, better with placing your shots. Factory Barrel, Laser Sight, High Power. It is absolutely devastating. 75 damage to the chest and can one-tap you in the face. Pretty much just blatantly overpowered. M1911. Not much to talk about here. Factory Barrel. No Under Barrel. And then, of course, Close Combat Extended if you unlock that. Uh, I obviously have not. Rex, again, not much to talk about here, unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen. M93R, you're going to want to use uh, the default muzzle on this. And, of course, the close combat extended. That also got buffed. I honestly don't know if it's worth using over the Glock. In fact, I actually, never mind. I, I do know it's not worth using over the Glock. Uh, MP443, you're going to want to use factory barrel. Then, of course, close combat extended. And uh, I don't really... Don't use the tactical light. It's just sort of giving yourself away. People say, oh, it can blind people. I don't know how true that is, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, before we go on to all of these other separate categories, a word from today's video sponsor, War Thunder. Thank you to War Thunder for sponsoring this video. War Thunder isn't your run-of-the-mill vehicle game. You can play over 2,000 different tanks, planes, helicopters, and more. All available free-to-play on Xbox, PlayStation, and PC. These vehicles in War Thunder take dynamic damage to different areas of the vehicle, and they're detailed down to their individual components. And all of this can be found within a free-to-play game, which I personally find to be incredibly impressive. But it doesn't end there, because say your vehicle is damaged or destroyed, War Thunder has an x-ray system which shows you exactly what happened in combat. And if you are someone that enjoys spicing things up with a bunch of variety in your gameplay, War Thunder offers multiple different game modes to fit your playstyle. So use my link in the description to claim these awesome bonuses and play for free on Xbox, PC, and PlayStation today. Who doesn't like some War Thunder? All right, moving straight back into the video. The best setup for the PBX-45 is Arcom Tactical Muzzle Break, LWG Grip, and Close Combat. 
You can use laser sight, but in my time using this weapon, I find the regular hip fire is already good enough, which means the LWG grip is better because it extends the weapon's accuracy over range. It's worth noting, this weapon is one of the fastest killing guns in the game with close combat ammo, with a blisteringly fast 200 millisecond time to kill, one of the best CQC SMGs in the entire game. PP29, not much has changed. Ta tactical compensator or factory barrel, I would recommend tactical compensator over it. Standard issue, then of course fill out your ammo types. MP9. This gun is not as terrible as it used to be, but they still kind of gutted it. Arcom tactical muzzle break, LWG grip, close combat drum. Another weapon, the hip fire is good enough to where you don't really need to use the laser sight. K30. Arcom tactical muzzle break, LWG grip, standard issue drum. Uh, high power extended is good too, so keep that, but I would I would recommend standard issue drum over it. Uh, AC9. Straight up just better than the K30. Arcom tactical muzzle break. LWG grip, and close combat extended, followed by standard issue extended. Both of these ammo types are extremely good. SEZ3. This weapon unfortunately got nerfed by, I think, 8% to its accuracy today, but it's still very accurate. Arcom tactical muzzle break, LWG grip, standard issue, then uh, standard issue extended, followed by high pow power. Um, you're going to want to use standard issue over high power because... Even though high power is called high power, standard issue has a faster time to kill at every single range for some reason. So we can uh, ask the dice balance team about that. P90. This weapon is actually worth using now after they bothered increasing the, um, the bullet velocity. So it is actually good now, ladies and gentlemen. You're going to want to use the laser sight. And then you're going to want to use the Arcom tactical muzzle brake. I don't know why that was unequipped. To get rid of that horizontal recoil. Then, of course, standard issue. This, this weapon actually is one of the only guns in the game to not feature uh, other magazine options, which is unfortunate. AKS-74U. This weapon just got buffed and update 7.1. It is now 10% more accurate. However, it is still not that great. Default muzzle, laser sight, standard issue extended. Not much to talk about there. PP-2000. Insanely good weapon. People sleep on this. Tactical compensator, standard issue extended. I think this is essentially an SMG scar. It's extremely good. Do not sleep on the PP-2000. Moving on to the assault rifle category. Actually, surprisingly enough, Subsonic is, technically speaking, the better choice over standard issue if you don't care about the extra 10 bullets of standard issue extended. Reason being is, Subsonic has the same stats BTK-wise as standard issue, but you get the added benefit of, you know, tracer visibility, muzzle flash improvement, blah, blah, blah. I still prefer standard issue extended, even though I have subsonic here because I was just testing it. So I would go with standard issue extended, subsonic, and close combat for your ammo types. You can arrange those in any, any category you want. I'd recommend standard issue here in the first slot. Short barrel always. Never use the M5 without short barrel. Then LWG grip. And for weapons, particularly assault rifles and SMGs and some snipers, you're going to want to make sure that you fill out these bottom rows here with any sort of grenade launchers or master keys that you want. That is very important because you can switch to them on the fly, ladies and gentlemen. AM40, Arcom Tactical Muzzle Break, LWG Grip, and Standard Issue, followed by High Power Extended and High Power. Uh, AK24, this gun is kind of weird. You just wanna, you're just going to want to use this gun for what it's good for. Uh, tactical Compensator and LWG Grip to give you the most accurate possible weapon than Standard Issue, Standard Issue Drum, and High Power Extended. Fill out your grenade launchers. Fun fact about the AK-24, it has the fastest underbarrel grenade launcher reload time in the game. I bet you guys didn't know that. The SFAR, one of the best weapons in the game. It's worth noting, using the pacifier skin gives you an insane red dot sight for this, game, for this uh, gun. So I'd recommend getting the pacifier skin for the SCAR. The SFAR, rather. Use tactical compensator. Fill out your grenade slots here. High power drum. I've seen some people say standard issue is good on this gun. It is not. Do not use standard issue. Always use high power on the SCAR. That is what this gun's sort of MO is. AC-42. This gun's kind of weird nowadays. You can do a bunch of different things with it. I just recommend using the factory barrel, which I just accidentally unequipped because I'm genius. Uh, use the SCNR laser sight, or you can use the LWG, or you can use the BCG light grip. This is one of those guns where you just kind of set up however you want, although use standard issue uh, as your ammo type. That is going to be, generally speaking, what you want to use. And um, you can even set this weapon up to use type 4... Um, 
subsonic, but I don't think it's worth the BTK. So very versatile weapon there in the AC-42. Arm 68, short barrel, LWG grip, standard issue extended. Um, let's see here. GEW-46, ARCOM, LWG grip, and high power extended. It's worth noting on this weapon that you also get a great red dot sight using the spiral out legendary skin. Um, it changes the fusion hollow into a great looking sight. Uh, the VHX, this gun's insane. Um, it's had many, many nerfs. I still utilize this gun with a laser sight. You can slap a grip on there if you want it to be more accurate. I would not change the Arcom Tactical Muzzle Break though, as they have definitely uh, pretty heavily nerfed this gun's you know, recoil and all that sort of thing. So uh, laser sight or LWG grip, uh, standard issue extended, standard issue and high power. That weapon does not have any like special sights for red dots. AK-5C, this is obviously the new assault rifle in season seven. There are two extremely viable setups for this weapon, okay? One is type four heavy suppressor and subsonic. The reason why this is my preferred loadout is because in my opinion, this is the way to use the AK-5C over everything else. Using Arcom Tactical Muzzle Break combined with high power just makes this weapon a worse version of the SCAR. So the, the setup that stands out with this weapon, in my opinion, is the ability to take yourself completely off the radar while maintaining a five bullet to kill to 75 meters. It is extremely unique. It's the only AR that I will ever recommend you do this on. And honestly, it's awesome because you get to use a master key and it's still accurate enough to where you don't need a grip. So the two setups, again, are either Type 4 Heavy Suppressor, Master Key, Subsonic, or Arcom Tactical Muzzle Break, Master Key, and High Power Extended. Those are the two setups I would recommend to you guys. And then, of course, fill out your grenade launcher slots, guys. Moving on, the M16A3. Dice, give the M16A3 its red dot back. What are you doing? Um, anyway, Tactical Compensator, LWG Grip, Standard Issue Extended. ACWR, um, not much to talk about here, to be honest. Factory barrel, STNR laser sight, and uh, standard issue extended. A91, also a pretty decent weapon in my opinion. Um, tactical compensator, laser sight, standard issue extended. M416, factory barrel, LWG, standard issue extended. And of course, fill out your magazine types. MTAR, this gun's also pretty decent, actually really good in close quarters. Default muzzle, LWG or laser sight, depending on your play style. I think this gun's a little inaccurate without the LWG grip. Standard issue extended. Finish that off. To finish off the AR category, we have the AEK 971. Arcom tactical muzzle break to tame that insane horizontal recoil this gun has. Laser sight and standard issue extended. You could also optionally opt to just run this gun full grenade launcher but I would say laser sight because it is a CQC absolute monster. We've gone to the LMG section. We first have the LCMG, short barrel, never use any other barrel. In general, you're gonna wanna use short barrel for any weapon that has it, except for the SVK, but I'll cover that later. Short barrel, LWG grip, and standard issue extended. A lot of people say close quarter combat is the best. Standard issue is actually still the best, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, even in even in close quarters, it has faster time to kill with short barrel than CQC. I know, it makes no sense. And then, of course, this is one of the only LMGs in the game that offers a master key, which is insane. So, L L LCMG, probably the best LMG in the game, in my opinion. Avancies, tactical compensator, LWG grip, standard issue extended. Just emphasize what this weapon is good at, being incredibly accurate. If you don't want to use the tactical compensator, you can use factory barrel, or you can choose between the Arcom or champion muzzle break, depending on which recoil you want to mitigate. PKP, Arcom, and high power extended. RPT-31, short barrel, LWG, and high power extended. M60, this re weapon recently buffed, incredibly accurate, very good. Tactical Compensator, LWG Grip, and Standard Issue Extended. It's worth noting that this weapon also has very low visual recoil. The XM8, Factory Barrel, Laser Sight, and Standard Issue Extended. M240B, 
This weapon also recently buffed Tactical Compensator, LWG Grip, and Standard Issue Extended. Type 88. This weapon also recently buffed. I believe it's 10% more accurate now. Tactical Compensator, Four Grip, which is actually one of the only remaining Four Grips in the entire game. And Standard Issue Extended. You could use a laser sight on this as well. Because in my opinion, it doesn't necessarily have terrible recoil. So you can sort of choose between, you know, which one you want to do there. Between the foregrip and the laser sight. Then lastly for the uh, uh, the LMG category, the RPK-74M. Tactical compensator. Laser sight and standard issue extended. I will say this weapon looks great with Midnight Tundra camo. Just, just pointing that out. Moving on to the marksman rifle category. Marksman rifles. Factory barrel. BCG light grip and standard issue. It is worth noting that you play if you play on console, if you play on controller input, you get less recoil. Actually, a significantly reduced amount of recoil, which means you can probably get away with different setups on DMRs than PC players because of the 0.75 first shot recoil multiplier and the reduction in vertical and horizontal recoil. I'm mentioning this in the DMR category because it is particularly strong with the DMR category. SVK. Tried a lot of different setups with this gun. Interesting fact. The short barrel is completely bugged. Do not use the short barrel. Actually, the best barrel to use is the long barrel because for some reason, the long barrel is also bugged and doesn't have really any downside. So that's very interesting. Long barrel, light grip, uh, BCG light grip, and of course, standard issue extended. The SVK remains one of the most overpowered DMRs in the history of, uh, honestly, I'm going to say gaming. V-car. Short barrel. If you can click super fast. If you, click, if you can't click super fast, you can get away with maybe champion muzzle break or perhaps even Archon muzzle break. But I'm a fast clicker, so I use short barrel. That helps the time to kill out. Laser sight and close combat drum. BSVM, still incredibly overpowered <laughs> after like 15 nerfs. Shorten, suppressor, LWG grip, and high power. It's worth noting you can turn this weapon into a submachine gun by equipping close combat. So this is a weapon that has two weapons in one, a DMR and an SMG. Really, really good. G428, honestly, gun's kind of trash now. They nerfed it and it's kind of trash. Factory barrel, BCG light grip, standard issue extended. Although, you might want to run high power, but if that's the case, just use pretty much any other DMR in the game. Use the SVK, use the BSVM. M39 EMR. It is worth noting that this weapon saw pretty substantial visual recoil reductions, so it might be worth using again, uh, and it is still absolutely insane. Champion Muzzle Break, Laser Sight, Standard Issue Extended. I believe the same goes... Excuse me, the same goes for... The SVD, Champion Muzzle, Laser Sight, Standard Issue, Extended. Moving on to the Snipers. Snipers are a bit of a weird category, kind of depends on what you want to do with them. So, for instance, I had my SWS to be sort of a more long-range, no-bullet-drop setup. Um, so you can use pretty much whatever barrel feels comfortable to you. Factory barrel, short barrel if you want faster follow-up shots, long barrel for long-range, um... Then laser sight, fill out your grenade launchers here, and fill out your ammo types. High power if you want to do more damage with less bullet drop. Standard issue if you want more ammo. Same goes for uh, the DXR, but in a different way. The DXR is the best long-range bolt-action sniper in the game, so just tailor it to do what it does best. Put a long-range scope on here, long barrel, and use high power. This thing has a bullet velocity of, I believe, over... 1200 meters per second with this setup so it is essentially point and click ntw50 it is worth noting this weapon does actually substantial damage to vehicles so if you want to just annoy vehicles i mean just piss them off anti-material high power does the job if you want to one-shot people in the chest from zero to 100 meters use anti-material XCE Bard. This is sort of the CQC sniper that has really fast follow-up shots. Um, in my opinion, you can just use factory barrel, you know, tactical compensator, 
yeah, that's pretty much what you want to use. I figured since it's a bolt action, it doesn't have any recoil. I'll slap the tactical compensator on there, because why not? Laser sight, standard issue extended, and of course, fill out your ammo types. Gall sniper. Factory barrel. Bipod, because I guess there's nothing else. And standard issue extended. It's worth noting, the skin has... I, this gun actually has a pretty insane new skin. So, that's pretty cool. But don't buy skins, because guess what, guys? Say it with me. Skins aren't content. Moving on to the last section in this video. If you watch to this point, thank you so much. Subscribe to the channel, turn notifications on, follow my Twitch stream, first link in the description. Hey, as of today, shotguns got sort of buffed and sort of nerfed. Hip fire is worse, but ADS accuracy is better, which means that basically shotguns are insane again because the MCS 880 can now kill you again from very far distances. In my testing, Factory Barrel, Laser Sight, and Number 4 Buckshot is the best setup for the 880. For the Government 4570, this weapon was buffed and is now actually worth using, ladies and gentlemen. Isn't that amazing? Tactical Compensator, Laser Sight, High Power is going to do the trick on that. 12M, I don't even need to say anything. Uh, short Barrel, Laser Sight, Buckshot, Shell Drum, just go to town on that. Ghostmaker R10, uh, Factory Barrel, Laser Sight, and Standard Bolt. The best long-range sniper to ever be added to a Battlefield game. The most overpowered thing I've ever seen, to be honest. The Railgun. Never use Burst Fire Capacitor. Ever. I actually removed it. The general use case for this gun now is essentially a sniper you can sit in the back of the map from like 3 million meters and just like put it on their head and, and like and kill them instantly. It's incredibly overpowered. High Power Capacitor is the sniper mode. Stream Capacitor is the full auto mode. And last... And, and honestly, probably least, because the MVK is just not that great. Factory Barrel, Laser Sight, Buckshot. Guns is not that good, man. So, if you enjoyed this video, if I'm an informative, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, follow my Twitch stream. I stream every single day at twitch.tv slash enders. Follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and join the Discord. All links are in the description. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Don't forget to use my link in the description to try out War Thunder for free today on PC, Xbox, and PlayStation to experience the over 2,000 incredibly detailed vehicles and awesome gameplay mechanics. Try the game out using my link and claim these awesome bonuses. Thank you to War Thunder for sponsoring the video.